Hi, it's Tom here from Running Physio. Today I wanted to talk to you about a great discussion point that we have on running repairs online, which is what do you think are the key muscles that we should strengthen in our runners? Uh, so I'd love to hear your views on this. What do you find effective for your runners? Where do you like to focus your rehab? And what muscles do you think are key? Um, and in this uh, video, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the, the roles of these key muscles, some of the peak forces they're exposed to. And we're also going to touch on the core a little bit as well. Now, if you'd like to find out more about running injury, we've got a great selection of free webinars over on our running resources page. And I've put the link to that uh, there for you in uh, the title there for you. OK, so let's talk a little bit about running and the, the way the muscles need to work in running. Now, as we run, as we land, um, we go into that loading phase where we see a lot of peak forces for the muscles involved in running. And in particular, the calf, the quads, and the gluteal muscles have to work very hard to manage load during that first loading phase. So for me, three key muscles that I'm often gonna assess and try and strengthen in most runners are gonna be the calf, the quads, and the glutes because they need to manage those high peak loads. In addition to that, another muscle group that has to work quite hard is gonna be the hamstrings. Now they have a slightly different role. They do work uh, to some degree during that loading phase. They have a co-contraction with the quads, but their main peak in activity happens actually at terminal swing as the leg swings through just prior to initial contact where we think those hamstrings have got to work really quite hard eccentric eccentrically to slow the leg down, which is why we think eccentrically biased exercises are gonna be particularly useful for the hamstring. So let's have a look at the numbers here, some of the peak forces that we might see these muscles exposed to. And these numbers here we're gonna present are based on data from Len Hart at all in 2014. So first up, let's look at the quads. Now, vastus lateralis, according to Len Hart at all's work, has got to manage 2.7 times body weight in peak force during running. So that has to manage quite a large amount of load. And in fact, we think the quads as a whole is gonna be managing something around four to six times body weight in peak load during the running gait cycle. But actually that's not much when you compare it to glute med, um, a much smaller muscle, but this has gotta manage around four times body weight in peak load during running. So glute med really has to work quite hard. And I think we need to make sure these muscles are strong enough to manage these high peak forces. But then that's even dwarfed uh, again by the soleus, which is really the daddy um, in terms of muscles um, running at endurance speeds, managing 6.6 .6 times body weight in peak force uh, during that loading phase. So we can see these three muscles in particular manage high peak forces during the loading phase in running, and they need to be strong enough to produce uh, these high peak forces. Now, one thing to bear in mind here is when we're looking at these peak forces, sometimes people will think, well, hang on a minute, if I wanna prepare the soleus for running, does that mean I've gotta get someone lifting six to seven times their body weight in the gym? The answer is no. When you factor in the physics, things like the, the moment arm, you're not looking at lifting that heavy in the gym. If we gradually build someone up to maybe one and a half or two times body weight in load with their rehab, that will be roughly similar to the type of loads you're gonna be exposed to during running. So we've got some quite high peak loads there um, for runners to manage. And they've got to be able to produce those peak loads quite rapidly, which is why we're, first we might want to develop strength to manage the load, but later in the rehab program, we might go on to develop power to create the rate of force development we need to produce that force quickly. Now we've got to think that when it comes to what muscles to strengthen in runners as well, it's going to be very individual. Um, it may be that we want to strengthen those that are weak, maybe as simple as that, it's particularly if those muscles tie in with a specific injury. So it's going to be based on what we assess in the runner. It's going to be based on the injury we see. Uh, someone with plantar fasciopathy, for example, there is evidence of weakness in around the ankle muscles and ankle in, uh, everters. So I might be more focusing around strengthening up the calf and around the foot and ankle in someone with plantar fasciopathy. 
someone with hamstring injury, uh, we may want to strengthen those other muscles which support the hamstrings in their role, uh, such as the adductors. So we're going to tweak it down towards individual need. And something we might want to bear in mind with these runners is what is their goal in terms of speed? Because an endurance athlete is going to be challenging the muscles in a different way to a middle distance athlete and to a sprinter. And we've got some great uh, data from uh, Dawn at all uh, that il illustrates this. And I'll just to give credit here to, to Rich Willie and also Aaron uh, J. Kumar who presented some of this data on Twitter. Um, now this is uh, the data from Dornatool's work in 2012. Um, up the side of the graph here, we've got peak forces in body weight. And on the bottom here, we've got four different speeds that they worked out these peak muscles at. So the first of these speeds, 3.49 meters per second, this is looking at kind of a, a reasonably good um, endurance athlete speed. So it's around about seven minutes, 41 seconds per mile. Uh, going up to the next speed, this is uh, the quicker end of the endurance speed spectrum for a lot of people, 5 minutes 11 seconds per mile. And then we're coming up to the faster speeds, 6.96 uh, uh, meters per second. That's actually the, the same pace as sub 4 minute miling, so 3 minutes 51 seconds per mile. And 8.9 uh, meters per second, that's really coming up to sprinting territory, roughly 3 minutes per mile. So what you see at these lower endurance speeds is that the stress, particularly on two important muscles here, um, the hamstring, which is the red dotted line, and the um, iliopsoas, which is coming up as another dotted line there, is relatively low. But as we increase speed, particularly towards sprinting, we see a real increase in the stress that these muscles are exposed to, particularly for iliopsoas, so the hip flexors and the hamstring. We also see as we increase speed that soleus, which is the top dotted gray line, tends to increase as well, although that dips slightly when we get up to sprinting, where we think the stress is shifting from distal around the calf up to proximal around the hip. So, the, the key point to take from this is if we increase speed, particularly towards sprinting, we're going to see a big increase in stress on the hamstrings and hip flexors, and they need to be strong enough to cope with this. We might also expect to see an increase in stress for muscles like the adductors as well, so they might become more of a target for work. So really, to the, to the answer to the question, what are the key muscles to strengthen in runners? Well, for a lot of them, it's going to be the ones with big roles like the calf, the quads, the glutes, and the hamstring. But if they're moving up into higher speeds towards sprinting, the priority will shift a bit more towards the hamstring and the hip flexors and to developing power um, in those key muscle groups. And of course, it is going to vary depend on individual needs, so muscles that you find to be weak, and the specific injury and presentation that they have. Now, there's a second half to this, this question, and I'd really love to hear your views on all of it. What do you think? You know, what do you think uh, are the key muscles? Am I missing any here? Are there some that you think we should bring into the rehab that are perhaps undervalued? But the second question here is, what about the core muscles? And you can't really say core without the little speech marks around it. And I think that's partly because we don't really know what core is. Um, what, what are we defining it as? Is it uh, the, the deeper muscles like transversus? Um, does it incorporate the gluteal muscles? Uh, does it involve keeping the trunk stiff? Or is it more about controlling movement? And I think that's part of the problem in terms of whether we should be training the core. We don't really necessarily know what it is. So I'd love to know your views on it. How do you define it? How do you train the, the core if you do work it? Now, I'm just going to throw one little um, nugget of information in here that maybe would get you thinking. Um, now, this is a um, quote from, uh, or some, some information rather, from a research paper from Marty Skeller et al., which is a review of exercises to see which ones actually recruit the core musculature. So which exercises actually work, things like multifidus and the, and the deeper core muscles. And what they actually concluded from this review is that our focus should be on multi-joint free weight exercise rather than core specific exercise to train the core in athletes. And that's because within this review, 
they actually found evidence that our multi-joint freeway exercise may be more effective for recruiting muscles like multifidus than sitting on a gym ball or tucking our tummy button in and doing these very specific core exercises. So it may be that our traditional strength and conditioning exercises um, would be actually very effective for strengthening up the core as well as these key muscles that need to actually perform these key roles like the quads, the hamstrings, the glutes, etc. So I'm going to throw that question back out to you. What do you think? Um, am I missing a trick here? Should we focus on the core? Would you actually focus on the core and how would you go about doing it? So I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know your thoughts on this topic and I'll get involved and answer your questions and things in the comments and replies afterwards. Now I see already we've got a couple of good comments in. Luke's weighed in with Go Solaris. Yeah, I agree Luke, Solaris is a very important muscle. Um, Sophie's made a really good point here. Um, you can't launch a, uh, a cannonball from a canoe. She said, is that outdated or still relevant in the term core? That's a great quote. I like that, Sophie. Thanks for sharing that one. So that's this idea that, you know, if, if you're in a, in a canoe and it's very wobbly, it doesn't have that, that stability, you can't launch a, a cannonball. You can't do something very powerful if you don't have that strong base. Um, and that's the one of the idea that underpins core, this idea that we should strengthen the core in, in order to have a strong base to work from. Now I can see the logic in that, but Martiskelo tools work which suggests as we strengthen other areas, it strengthens the core as well. And I think again it comes back to this question mark of whether, you know, how do we define the core? Um, and how do we measure it? How do we actually measure core strength or stability in an accurate way? Now I do wonder if we come back to Sophie's really nice analogy there of you can't launch a cannonball from a canoe. Maybe there's an element of stiffness there that we want to be able to create from the core. Is that what we're talking about here? Um, and sometimes I think maybe we can see that, for example, in hamstring uh, injury, hamstring muscle tear, if there's a lot of movement happening around the pelvis, a lot of anterior pelvic tilt, that in theory may increase the stress on the hamstrings. And there is some evidence if we strengthen through the trunk, it may reduce hamstring re-injury rates. But literally, we're talking about one paper here. But perhaps there's something in that that we can target exercises actually around improving control or stiffness through the trunk. Again, I'd love to hear what you think on this. How would you go about working on that? So few question marks um, about this uh, to throw out there. Really, the point of this is to share this discussion point um, that we, we've shared on Running Repairs Online. So I'd love to hear your views on it. Let me know what you think. Um, so uh, I look forward to reading those replies and things in the comments. And uh, if you'd like to find out more about running injury, of course, make sure you click the link in the title and go and have a look at our webinar series we've got available there. Okay, I'll say goodbye for now and I'll dive into the comments and replies. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.